same. You know, this is actually quite ironic that we mix standards so we can test as well as people in Shanghai. It doesn't cut it. Even if you did, it won't work because they would ask for five cents, you would ask for fifty dollars. That, that you can't do it. So that that's a great and a simple fact. So American education has to teach something different. And by teaching something different, you avoid this head on conflict. You avoid competing for the low paying wages. What do you lead the world into actually much more innovative thinking? So that's really number one. Number two, with this global competitiveness has to do with uh, globalization actually open the market. It's not about trying to divide the same pizza. We are remaking different types of pizza, maybe making donuts, making different things. It's, it's, it's very different. It's that we have to recreate jobs, recreate industries. It's not to, it's not a zero-sum game. Right now the global competitiveness falls into the trap of thinking it's a zero-sum game. That the five jobs, if they move to China, we're dead. So we got to keep the five jobs here. That's completely wrong. It's in the, in the history has shown that we have completely expanded our work. I mean, the, 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 if you look at actually you know, the industry changes, it's, it's shocking you know, how we have to remake. Main industry didn't exist, now they exist because we have innovators and the creators. So we need a lot more entrepreneurs and creative people who will actually invent jobs, not trying to defend the jobs that should go to other places. You know? And the third part of the global competitiveness is that when other countries move along the value chain, they are going to become more middle class. They're going to open the market. So our job is to figure out how do we meet their needs to capitalize on this new market, not try fighting the same jobs to keep jobs here. That's a very interesting Cold War mentality. That means if their rise is our demise, that doesn't compute in that way. So what, what we have to do is that is okay, we want to help them grow. Therefore, we can grow, but we don't grow in the same area. We would market our, ingenu I mean, our ingenuity, creativity in a different way. So that's why, you know, global competitiveness for me is actually has to be a global citizenship or global entrepreneurs. You understand what others need. You understand what you have. You go meet the needs and you grow together. You make the pie larger. You try to not try to defend yourself. I think the current thinking of standards the current thing of global competitiveness freezes us actually in the 19th century. So that as if nothing changes, nothing moves, we stay here. Again, I have five jobs. I'm going to put a big ar uh, army out there, political army or economic army to say, okay, I'm going to keep the five jobs here. That's it. And then we're going to make sure our kids can do the five jobs. It doesn't work that way. The standards movement, the, the common core, whatever it is, trying to make a guess about the future. Make a bet to say, if you learn this stuff, you'll be career ready in the future. That's not going to be ready. You can't make a guess of the future jobs. The only way to do is to liberate human beings so they can create their own space.